Hello, this is Lisa Langell with Langell Photography. And today I want to teach you a couple of ways that you can put a backing or mat or frame around your image, such as the one that I'm showing here. Now there's some third party tools that you can use or install as plugins in Photoshop in order to do this, but I'm going to show you how to do it right in Photoshop without spending the extra money. All right, so this is your example. I'm going to close this out and we're going to use a different image to show you how to do this. So these are images from my Magic of Cowboys workshop in Gold Canyon, Arizona. I thought they'd be fun ones to try today. So when you start out, uh, you potentially in Photoshop will have images with multiple layers for your editing purposes and what we need to do in order to frame this is a couple of different things. First we're going to save the image as a file and call it framed so that we don't damage the original image that you've been working on. So I'm going to go file, save as, and then I can, you know, create a new folder if I want to, and I can call this framed. So I will do that. And then I will label this as framed. And you can save it as a TIFF, as a Photoshop file, whatever you like, doesn't matter to me. All right, so I'm going to click save and there we go. Now it's saved as a new file. Now the next thing we need to do is flatten these layers. So I'm going to go to layer and then I'm going to go all the way down to flatten image. And that's going to flatten it into one layer. Then what I'm going to do is duplicate that layer. Okay, so we've taken multiple layers, flattened it, and now I'm duplicating that layer. Using the top copy, I am going to resize this because typically if I'm putting a frame around it, I use it for the web. So I'm going to size this as a smaller image. But you do you. If you want the full size image, you can do that too. So I'm going to go to image and then I'm going to go to image size and I'm going to change this image to let's say six inches wide and I keep the scale the same so it'll be uh, six inches wide and four in and change inches tall. If you would prefer pixels, you know, you can change it to pixels. So maybe uh, 2,000 pixels on the long side is what you want. Well, you can do that too. Whatever you prefer, you can change it to. All right, so I'm just zooming out here to uh, make this a little bigger. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to image down to canvas size and this window pops up. For this image, I'm going to make my size, uh, let's say one inch is one inches wide by one inches tall. And then you absolutely must leave this relative check checkbox, this relative box checked. Don't do it unchecked or it won't work. So one inches wide by one inches tall. You can make your frame wider or narrower if you prefer, but definitely make sure you leave that relative checked bo uh, checkbox checked. Then we're going to change the color. So you can choose white if you want. It goes to pure white, black, or gray, or you can do other. And other allows you to do all kinds of different colors, and you can play around with all of this. I'm just going to do white, so I can drag this to the upper left side, and I'll click OK. Or you could change this to white, and that would work as well. And so uh, I have my white frame here. Now I'm just going to click OK. And now it puts a one inch white frame around my image that was about six inches wide by four and change inches tall. So I think that looks like a good scale. But we're not going to stop here. This just kind of looks like a white outline or, a, you know, I don't like it as much. I want to make it look a little more three dimensional. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to layer, layer style. And we're going to choose bevel and emboss. And the screen pops up and bevel and emboss becomes checked and your controls for that are over here. So in this case, watch my edges. If I choose bevel and emboss, I can play with the depth and I can play with the size. So look at the image, look over here, you're going to see how that bevel is changing. So if I pull the size back, you barely see it. If I make it real wide, you see it a lot. Of course, we don't typically want something like that. And you can choose your technique to be smooth or chiseled hard, which gives you a harder edged bevel here. 
I'll make it bigger just so you can see that hard edge. I don't really want that hard of an edge, so I prefer smooth, but you know, depends on the situation. And then you can also soften it out further if you want to. I don't like to make the size real big. I like to keep it barely noticeable. Then you have the angle over here. Now in this case, the light is coming from behind the image and this would be simulating uh, an image being hung on the wall. So if you want to have your light coming from the right, this side will be lighter. If you want to have your light coming from the left, this side would be lighter. But right now it's darker because this side is lighter. It's simulating the angle of light that theoretically is illuminating this print if you were to print it. So you can change the angle by changing this around to be what you want. I think I'm going to leave mine right here, you know, 35, 45, somewhere right in there. All right, so now that we've done that and you've played with your size and, and all of that, we're going to go down here to drop shadow and I'm going to click on it and that will select that checkbox. And this gives you a subtle drop shadow. Now I'm going to make my drop shadow, pay attention to this area, really dark for a minute just so you can see it. See how that drop shadow comes and goes? I can change the distance of it, but that kind of looks hideous, right? I don't want it that dark, so my opacity is going to be pretty subtle. And my distance isn't going to be that dark, that far away. I'm just going to do a light distance. You can kind of play with the spread, which is sort of the ooze of it, if you will, and the size of it, but I'm going to keep it pretty simple. I'm going to keep my distance really close and maybe just a little bit more spread. And you can change the opacity slightly if you need to. Okay, that probably looks pretty good. All right, so now I'm gonna click OK and now you have your frame. You can add text by clicking the text tool and typing on it if you want to. Uh, you know, put your name or whatever you like on there. All right, there's my name just for example. Or I could put Langell Photography there. All right, so that's how you would do this. And then go ahead and save it, uh, you know, just save the file so that you can keep it or continue to do further adjustments. Okay, so now that I'm done with that, if you want to make this look more framed, we can add another border and start over. But you have to now flatten this image. So go to Layer, Flatten. And if you want to save this as an additional file, you can do that too. I'm not going to for the purpose of this exercise, but you can separate them out if you want to. All right, so now I want to put a little thin border on this. And I am going to go to my color picker here, and I might pick a color. Like, let's say we want a dark brown frame or nearly black frame. So I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to go to Image, Canvas Size. And I can either choose that color that I just picked or I can go in and, you know, pick a slightly different color. Maybe I want a gold frame or whatever, but I'm going to keep mine pretty dark. I think that's going to look the nicest. I'm going to click OK. And then for the width on this, I'm going to say uh, maybe a third of an inch. So 0.3 and height also 0.3. OK, click OK. And now I have this dark brown slash black border around everything. But again, that just looks like a border. Let's make it look more three-dimensional as if we're simulating a frame. So I can go to my layer, layer style, and this time I'm going to choose inner shadow. So I choose inner shadow and you'll notice how it puts this slight shadow here. And I can change the opacity if I want to make it darker. I can change the distance from the edge of the frame so maybe something more like that. I can choose the choke, which changes kind of the sharpness of that shadow. I'm going to leave that back pretty far. And I can choose the size, which is a little bit like the ooze of the frame, gives it a little bit more of that three-dimensional look. And lastly, I can change the angle. But given that my angle on the bevel and emboss and drop shadow was 49, Photoshop remembers that and put the 49 degrees here and kept everything the same. I highly recommend doing that so that you actually will have something that looks correct. All right, I'm going to adjust these just a little bit more and I'm going to click OK. And now we have our frame. 
So you can go ahead and save this file and you'll have a beautiful framed image. And now you know how to do it, how to change the colors, and of course you can change the sizes and more as needed. I hope this helps. This is Lisa Langell. Thanks and have a great day.